What is up everybody, Nolux Given here, and today I'm going to run through a short tutorial and just kind of talk about some appraisal tips, how I appraise by level, and this can be really important for community days or events where you catch a bunch of the same type of Pokemon. The first thing that you're going to want to do is sort your Pokemon by CP or by number because that will also do a CP sort. From there, you want to type in the Pokemon that you are going to be looking at because this only works for one type of Pokemon at a time. So you'll see some of my Beldum have weird names after them. Don't worry about that for right now. Basically, I've already gone and looked at some of my spawns, but you can see I have so many Beldum and I can't look at them all. I've spent three hours catching them and now I only have an hour to figure out which ones I want to evolve. So we want to appraise these Pokemon thoroughly but as quickly as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a Beldum and I'm going to appraise it. That's where it starts. Now we found a bad one to start off and here we find, okay, uh, a slightly better one. I've already done this one because it's shiny. A lot of times you'll wind up appraising all your shiny Pokemon anyways. If I haven't said it already, sorry about the construction going on in the background. But now that we've found a Pokemon that costs 6,000 Stardust to power up, that means we only have to concern ourselves with other Pokemon that also cost 6,000 Stardust. So that's 7,001, we can skip it. And now we found something that costs 5,000 Stardust. So that means this Pokemon is either level 31 or 30. So we appraise it, it's strong, its attack is the um, the thing that its attack indicates, so I don't really care too much about that. Then we find another one with 7,000. Again, well not again, so this Pokemon has a higher level now, that 7,000 one, and we don't have to worry about it. We can just skip it and go to a 5,000 Pokemon. This one wound up not being so good, but we don't have to look at the 7001. We know that it's going to be the lowest appraisal tier, and that is the lowest appraisal tier. I mark those with a V, um, but that is Valor's lowest appraisal tier. This 6001, we don't have to do it. We can skip it. We know that because it's a higher level and a lower CP, then that means it's going to wind up being a lower IV. So some of these things you'll notice, I'm just putting random letters at the end. I put an A at the end if it's amazing, uh, an S if it's strong, a D if it's decent, and then I just put a V if it is the bottom tier appraisal. Here's another one that already has a D on it, so I could have skipped that one realistically too. And here we go, oh, we have a 4,000 strong attack excellent. So I'm gonna go strong attack excellent and use that naming system. And that just lets me know that I've already appraised it. I don't have to worry about it again. And I'm gonna take a screenshot. So that way I can put it in my favorite. I use Poke Genie, but you can use whatever kind of uh, Kalki IV or any type of IV type of thing you got going on. So this one is decent with 15 attack. I use a capital A for myself to mark 15 attack. Um, this is something that I already had this Pokemon before the Community Day event, and I just marked it with a dollar sign just to let me know that I wanted to trade that guy and get rid of it. It wasn't any good. So I'll do a mix of all of these different things. The important thing, yeah, you do want to be consistent, but the important thing really is that you have a naming system where when you look at a Pokemon, you can tell what it is in a split second. So right now what i'm going to do when i'm going through there's there's only so much time left we only have an hour to figure out which ones we want to evolve uh so what i'm going to be doing is only renaming the pokemon that i think are really worth hanging on to everything else like sure that one was i think it was strong or something yeah this one's strong hp attack it's not crazy um Strong attack, excellent. Okay, this one I will rename. I'm, I'm mostly focused on attack IVs. After that, I'm focused on IVs as a whole. Uh, there we go, there's another um, 35,000 one. So I think I was just scrolling through there a little bit. 
ahead of myself, but we'll check all these 4,000 ones. Again, anything with 5,000 or 4,500, we don't have to look at, but this 3,500, that's kind of an outlier, so we know that that one's gonna be good. We IV check it, we get Amazes Me, Attack Blown, so highest tier appraisal with 15 HP. I might have said the wrong thing there, I apologize. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff and numbers flying by, but I think you guys basically get the gist of it. Here's another one that I've already done, and I could have told you that it is Amazes, amazes Me, Attack and Defense are excellent just by that uh, name that I've given to it. So now that I've seen something that costs 3,000 Stardust to power up, I only have to look at the Pokemon that also costs 3,000 Stardust to power up. Anything that costs more than that is a higher level. And something with a higher level and lower CP means it's going to have much lower IVs. And that's the basic gist of this video. So this is what I will basically do for all of my Pokemon and I'm going through a little bit slower here so that I can tutorialize it and because I was thinking about what I wanted to say and uh, talking through it as I recorded this but you can um, see how this would be a lot faster than making sure you appraise everything here we're getting into some of my egg hatches uh, BBC for a 14 14 13 IV Pokemon get your head out of the gutter uh, but that's another naming system that I'll do and you'll notice after I rename them so amazes me attack excellent that one I didn't uh, care too much about amazes me attack defense excellent I'm, I've, I'm feeling like at this point I'm probably gonna have some better Pokemon but typically what I will do also is I will screenshot these Pokemon all right so here we have one with 15 attack uh, so yeah hit it up with the uh, capital A there and that uh, CFC, that means it's a 13, 15, 13 by my naming metric if you're following along with that. So what the other thing is that I want to do is, um, or the other thing that I want to do is, is after I have renamed the Pokemon, then I screenshot them. And that way when I get it into a Pokegenie, uh, I'll already have all of the information that I need in just that one picture, and that'll help out a lot. So I think I kept going here and found something pretty good, so I'll let it play out for a little bit longer. Uh, keep going in these 2,500. So you do have to check every Pokemon when you get to, like, okay, these are going down and getting worse and I guess that wasn't a good example. Maybe this is a better example. So we have a, um, a strong with 15 attack at 2200, but they can still get better. This is a strong with uh, excellent attack, right? But that doesn't mean that every Beldum with 2200 is still going to be worse than this. And that's because each power up cost actually has two levels associated with it. So even though the last Beldum that costed 2200 to power up was decent, this is actually a 15 attack and defense wonder. So that is going to be a great Beldum worth hanging on to. I take a screenshot of it after favoriting it and uh, typing its new name in there. That's definitely going to be a Beldum that I want to evolve and looks like I found another pretty good one. Okay, not quite. But there's some other good ones in here too that I wind up finding. And like I said, there's, I mean, I, I scrolled through them. There's about 200 Beldum here and you have limited time, but you're still able to go through kind of thoroughly while at the same time making sure that you view everything. So you know what I'm gonna do? While I'm actually recording this audio track and having this play on in the background here, I'm going to pop that screenshot that you just see, saw me take. And this one uh, also winds up being pretty good. Yeah, so let's take a look at this one here, my 463. How did that shake out? Okay, it was a 15, 15, 9. But you know what? That winds up still being pretty good. And that's definitely a worthwhile Beldum for me to evolve in one of those exclusive moveset windows. 
So hopefully this can help you guys. Um, it, it, it's definitely a tedious process. Oh, there's another really good one too. Um, so yeah, finding some finding some good ones that I actually hadn't really you know taken the time to go through. But if you just kind of comb through them with this tactic, then you can hopefully find some sweet Ivy Beldums or other event Pokemon of your own. Hopefully that helps guys and helps explain that concept a little bit more. Uh, that's going to be it for me. Thanks for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.